Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today we're getting close to the end of our misty morning and focus combination. I've been doing this lately, it's really, really good. Anyways guys, today we're gonna be talking about a alternative to Photoshop. Now, most of you know, or if you're new here, you don't know, but everyone else knows that I'm the guy that did this whole life after Adobe cutting the cord thing. I'm gonna probably put a card somewhere around here. You can go take a look at the series. It's gotta be like 20 plus videos in there. And it's all about cutting the cord from Adobe and using different packages. Doesn't matter what it is for Lightroom, for Photoshop, for Premiere, from Audition to whatever it is, okay? I give you a whole bunch of different packages that I currently use instead of Adobe, all right? And maybe some of them you might like and maybe test out. Well, today is going to be one of those days. Now, one of the pieces of software that I said was really good, that's free, as an alternative to Photoshop was GIMP. GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, okay? It's been around for a decade or more. It's been around for a really, really long time. I think it began in Linux and it moved into PC and then Mac. It's been around for, like I said, a long time and it works really well. Now, there is a new fork that's coming off the GIMP project and that's called Glimpse. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Basically, it is a rebrand of GIMP, but they're going to change it a little bit. Now, I wanna tell you why and what has happened, just to give you a little bit of backstory. And then, before the end of this video, I'm gonna bring you into the new software just so you can see it, all right? So let me start out by saying, at the very beginning, when they came out with GIMP, all right, or GNU Image Manipulation Program. The two guys that made it kind of came up with the name based on Pulp Fiction and the guy from Pulp Fiction, the GIMP. And it was almost, it was basically comical, all right? And no one ever thought anything of it because the actual program is GNU Image Manipulation Program, GIMP. So no one thought it was anything wrong with it, but as of late, as you know, I did an entire video based on PC and how people are just losing their mind and getting their panties in a bunch today with this whole political correctness. Now bear in mind, if you never used GIMP before, it is a Photoshop alternative, but it doesn't look pretty, okay? What I found out was the last time they touched the UI or the GUI or the graphical user interface on this software is 2012, guys, all right? So you're looking at like an eight-year-old interface and it looks like an eight-year-old interface. Does it work? Yes. Can you use it? Absolutely, 110% people do all over the world and it's free. But like I said, this new fork is going to get the name change, but they're also going to get that new, let's say, overall usability functionality upgrade or update. And that's something that they've needed for a long time. They're also going to shoehorn into this, bundled with it, a bunch of, let's say, preloaded plugins that help out a lot. So that's really cool also. So if you go over to the website GitHub and look up Glimpse Image Editor, it says, the aim of Glimpse Image Editor is to repackage the GNU image manipulation program to make it more appealing to the wider computer using public and also to better tailor the program for school and workplace deployments. So, like I said, the vocal minority said, listen, you need to change the name. We want to get this into schools, but we don't want the program to be called GIMP. All right, we don't want the kids to get a negative view of the software. I mean, this crap gets old after a while. It, it, to me, it does. I mean, I'm not a young guy, all right? This whole PC thing is just stupid, all right? In my personal opinion, but you know, that, that's me. So anyways, the good part about this is yes, they're rebranding it, but they're going to be adding in a lot of niceties. Just the brand new GUI alone will be amazing to be able to see that in here. Now, as of today, it's not in there yet. 
They're working on it. They started out with this rebrand. I think they're on 0.21 right now. I believe that's the one that I downloaded and I'm gonna show you in just a second. But I wanted to let you know that this is a valid alternative to Photoshop. It works out fantastic. You can do layers, you can do everything that you can do in Photoshop for the most part. And it's free, which is really nice. Now, bear in mind, you can download it for Linux, you can download it for PC, but as of right now, it is not available on Mac OS, but it will be soon, according to the developers. So you know what, before I go any more into this, let me go ahead and show this to you real quick, all right? Let's jump over to my screen. This is what it looks like, kind of similar to Photoshop. You have all of your tools over here, all the stuff that you know, your move tool, your paint tool, your text tool, all the rest of this stuff. It's all here. Let me just go ahead and just do something really quick. Let me bring in an image, just like a stock image, just to show you. Here's a stock image. So let me go and throw some text on top of it, drag this over like this, maybe like this. That's where we're gonna put it. Uh, let's see, the font will make it 360 in size. We'll make it bold. Working from home. I like that. That's apropos, right? Let's go ahead and change this over to a different font for right now. So I wanna move these characters together a little bit. Let's do negative 20. Perfect, that looks good. And uh, let's change the color to black. That looks good. I don't mind that at all. Do we wanna make it a little larger? Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and make it 360. Now we pick up our move tool so we can pick that up, grab it, put it over here, put it down here. You know what? We're going to leave it down here. Maybe we'll make a little background for it. So let's grab our rectangle tool and we'll maybe pull it like this and then create a new layer and then fill it. What color are we going to fill it with, guys? Let's grab the eyedropper. Maybe we'll use some green. I like this green back here. What do you think? And then we'll use our little paint can and select the correct layer. And there we go, perfect. Now, of course, the words disappeared. Why? Because we have to go and move this layer up one. There we go, perfect. How about if we go and add one more layer on top of this one and maybe paint over it. So it's a little bit more grungy, let's say. So let me grab a paintbrush and we have the correct color, which is this green. We make sure we're on the right layer. I wanna get rid of some of that harsh line that's there. Just something like this, nothing crazy, just to do a little bit of something with it. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's get rid of this over here. Now we can see we're painting over the words. We don't wanna do that. So we wanna take this layer and move it behind our lettering. And there you go. So that looks good. We'll just leave it at that and we'll save it. So we'll come over here to File. We'll hit Export As. We wanna make sure it's a JPEG, which it is. We're gonna save it to our desktop. We'll call it Test with Glimpse, perfect hit export, and here it gives you a couple of options. We can change the quality from 100% to 50, whatever we want. Now we're gonna hit export, and that is it. Let me go and take a look at it. Let's go over to our desktop and double click on it, and there you go. That's what it looks like, that's the JPEG. As you can see guys, it's really quite simple. It's the same thing as using Photoshop for the most part. Now, do you need to learn where the tools are? Yes. Some of them will work a little bit different than other tools, yes. But honestly, for most of you out there, this would be enough, all right? And like I said, it's free. Now, as it is right now, that GUI is the old GUI, but they are revising it. They're making it new, and I can't wait to see it once it is done. So, if you guys want to go and download it, let me bring this up on the screen. Go to glimpse-editor.org. And over here on the right hand side, it says downloads. Go ahead and click on that. And here is the version 0.1.2. That is the version that I just showed you. Now, once again, they have a version for Windows, one for Linux, but they do not have Mac. And as you can see down here at Mac, it says the Glimpse project does not currently support Mac OS platform, but we are actively working on it. So that's really cool. So guys, as you can see, it's pretty much a Photoshop alternative. Is it as pretty? No, it is not. Does it do most of the same features that Photoshop does? Yes. Is it a learning curve just like everything else? Yes, you're gonna need to figure out where the different tools are, how they work, they might function a little bit differently and this type of thing. But besides that, the software is free. 
And for probably 80 or 90% of you guys, the normal things that you do with Photoshop, this software will probably be good enough. All right, we talk about that all the time. Do you wanna buy something that's 20, 25 bucks or like this free in comparison to paying continuously 10 and 10, $120 a year for the cheapest program that Adobe has? What do you wanna do? Some people will say, you know what, I'll take Adobe. Other people, a lot of you that have come to me saying, hey, do you have alternatives? You're gonna want something like this. So if you go and pick up GIMP, or if you go and pick up Glimpse, as of today, they're pretty much the same. A little bit different, but pretty much the same. But very soon, if you pick up Glimpse, it's gonna look completely different. And I'm gonna say much, much better than GIMP. And what they will probably do is phase out GIMP altogether. Now, once again, do I agree with the whole change of name after you know a decade, two decades, whatever it is, forever that this thing has been around? I don't, but I see where they're coming from. They want to make everything just you know like rainbows and unicorns. Okay, people need that today. They need to be stroked. No one wants to be offended in any way. Nothing can be offensive at all. And uh, if the vocal minority say that GIMP is offensive, even though it is and always has been for decades, GNU image manipulation program, it just doesn't matter. They have to make the change. If not, no one's gonna be using it. And like they said, they wanna get it out there to the teachers. They wanna get it out there to the educators. And I think it is a smart move on their part. I really, really do. So anyways, guys, that is Glimpse. Check it out. Once again, you just watched me use 0.1.2, I believe. So it is as new as it comes. You saw it here, probably first. Anyways, if you still need these microfiber cleaning cloths I told you about in the last video that I'm giving you 50% off, there's still a few hundred of these left because I brought in a thousand. Anyways, um, use that promo code YT50 at checkout. You'll be able to pick those up. You should be able to get some still on Amazon, but Amazon is a hot mess right now because of the COVID-19. If you can't find them there, pick them up over at my website and use that promo code YT50 and you'll get 50% off. Also guys, if you need to clean your sensor, you can take a look at my product. It's called the Aurora Camera Care. This one, this package right here is the camera sensor and lens cleaning kit. So basically it gives you sensor cleaners as well as your lens cleaners. The sensor cleaners look like this. They're like swabs. This one is full frame, so that's the size of it, okay? But you can get these for full frame APS-C as well as micro four thirds. So they're different sizes. It comes with a wet as well as a dry. You use the wet and then you go with the dry over it and you're basically done. Your sensor is 100% clean, period. So check those out. You can use promo code YT20 for anyone that subscribed to the channel. Once again, YT20 and you get 20% off this from the website. So a lot of people have been asking me for those too because their sensors are just so dirty. The mirrorless sensors are just, they get really, really dirty because there's nothing to shield them. And when you take your lens off, all the dust just goes in there like a magnet, right? So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be absolutely awesome. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon over here so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That would be awesome. So that's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to each and every one of you. Stay safe, stay healthy.